I had <clears throat> tried over the course of yesterday evening and uh, my flight last night to put together some thoughts uh, on how to best summarize uh, what made my, my grandfather, my Zaidi, so special. Um, and I was having trouble. And then this morning during davening, um, I said seven words that did it better than I could have ever done myself. Uh, one of the things we said this morning was, Lo amos ki echye v'asaper ma'aseka. I will not die because I will live. And I will tell of the wonders of the workings of Hashem. And these seven words summarize the life and the legacy of my grandfather, my Zaidi. I'll take this Pasuk part by part. The Pasuk begins, Lo Amos, I will not die. And as we've heard, his, his story could have easily ended very differently in a very different place and a very long time ago. The odds were certainly stacked well against him as a 13-year-old boy thrown into the horrors of the Shoah. But as one of the things I learned from watching and watching again and watching again his Shoah testimony, he was instructed by his own father that you must live. The last words he heard from his own father, and he indeed possessed a will and a drive to stay alive. And that will and drive is just astounding. He possessed instincts, resourcefulness, intelligence, cunning, and a keen understanding of people that allowed him to escape the most dire of situations. He not only succeeded, as we've heard, in surviving himself, but when he found himself working in the kitchen, he used that advantageous position to help other Jews in need at great risk to himself. And again, this is at 13 and 14 years old. It's just unfathomable nowadays. Lo Amos, he just refused. He would not allow himself to die. Next, the Pasuk says, Ki echia, because I will live. Now, at first glance, it appears superfluous. If you don't die by definition, you are living. But there's a difference, and Zaidi, you, you exemplified this. Not only did you survive, but you lived, and you lived in every way imaginable. As anyone who knows him can attest to, he was never, ever lazy. He had many goals. He pursued each one of those goals with energy, focus, intelligence. After the war, he became incredibly accomplished in everything he undertook, and he undertook many different endeavors. He came to the country as a teenager. He finished high school in two years. He obtained smicha, not because he wanted to practice as a, as, a, as a rabbi, because that was important to him, and that's something he wanted to do just for himself. He was knowledgeable about and excited about so many disciplines. He awoke early, he was never late to anything, and he put every minute of his life to good use. I used to chuckle when I would spend Shabbos in, in Beaver Lake, one of my, my, my favorite childhood memories, with, with Zaidi and with, with Ma. And he, these are small things, but they just they bring back memories. And he would just, I'd get up on Friday morning at 8 or 9 or whenever it was, and he would proudly announce that he was the first one in line at the bakery at 5 o'clock in the morning buying the challahs. Whenever we were together for Shabbos, he was always dressed and ready two hours before Shabbos. And he couldn't understand why the rest of us weren't. And that's just how he was. Every, every minute of his life, he, 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 he just lived, and he just truly lived in every sense of that word. And finally, we said this morning, Va'asaper ma'aseka. I will tell of the workings of God. It's not enough to survive. It's not enough to, to live. What you do with that life that you're given matters as well. And he indeed spent his life telling of the workings of God, reflected both in his mastery of Torah knowledge and his immense knowledge of and appreciation for and his understanding of Hashem's role in many other secular subjects. He was a Talmud Chacham. He was the embodiment of somebody who had mastered more Torah knowledge than I could imagine. He always had a Gemara open whenever I would see him. He loved to tell people Divrei Torah whenever he would meet somebody, he would tell a Dvar Torah. If he told them the same one the previous year, they listened again. He took such pride in writing me an original Bar Mitzvah speech, which was just an absolute masterpiece, and I, which I repeat every year on that Parsha, and it, just, it, it continues to just amaze people. And just one more story in this vein, which, again, a small story, but just had an impact on me. A few years ago, I, I, I came in to visit to New Rochelle from Los Angeles with my wife, Tali, and, and, our, and our kids. And 
we were in my parents' home in New Rochelle, and, 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 and Zadie and, and, and Ma, you, you both came to, to see us to visit. And I was standing on the front porch with a couple of my kids, and Zadie approached us. He got, got out of his car and approached us. And I expected a hug, a hello, a, a Dwar Torah, a joke. And all of a sudden, he stopped. He put his hands in the air, and he belted out, I wasn't sure I'd ever see you again, but behold, Hashem has shown me also your children. I was floored. That's the Pasuk from Parshas Vayechi, where Yosef brings to Yaakov his children. And again, instead of hugging them, instead of kissing them, the first thing Yaakov says is, and it just, it just meant so much in, in showing me who he was that that first time when he saw us, when, you know, we, we lived across the country, we hadn't seen him in, in, in many months. And the first thing he did, his first thought, was a quote from the Torah and a praise of God all wrapped in one. And that just embodies somebody uh, who, you know, we can truly say about him that Torah was always at the tip of his tongue. On a somewhat different and more personal level, he, he loved being his 80 and was good at it. To, to me and to my, my, my brothers and my cousins, he, he acted silly with us. He tickled us. He told us stories of Leo the Lion and Fuchs the Fox and their animal friends. He sang songs in Hungarian. We, we, we could not stop laughing at how funny it was. He used funny voices. He was funny. He was entertaining. And we loved spending time with him. I'll always have wonderful memories of spending time with, with, with Zadie and with you, Ma, in your various homes. There was the winter break in Miami when I was staying with the two of you, and, and one morning Zadie announced, we're going to the parrot jungle. And, and so it was, the three of us went to the parrot jungle, and he entertained me by talking to every single parrot that was there. Not one of them talked back to him. I spent Shabbos with him in Borough Park. I loved our Mose Shabbos trips, Ma, to Mendelssohn's Pizza, to Video Rama, to get a video to come back and watch on the maybe 13-inch television in the basement. And finally, most dear to me of all, the many, many Shabbases, holidays, and other times we spent in Beaver Lake, including your Hachnasa Sefer Torah, when my family and my cousins all gathered in Beaver Lake to celebrate that incredible mitzvah and milestone uh, with, with my grandparents. And that was who he was for me and for his other grandchildren, a smiling face, a warm home, and a proud, devoted, and doting Zadie. Lastly, just one, just one point, and I won't be able to get more than that out of this. Just want to recognize my mother for just teaching me and all of us, and my children. I try to explain to them what you do, just showing us what it means and showing us a level of keep it up, aim that I, I can't imagine we'll ever meet. Mom, he, he, I'm sure he appreciated every, every single minute of your love and your care. You gave years of your life to ensure that not only was he well, not only was he healthy, but he was respected, he had a fulfilling life, he was able to do mitzvos, and I, I just don't know how you did it. So thank you for, for being that example for, for us and for, for my kids and for everybody else. There's so much more to say. Zadie, I, I love you. I hope all of your grandchildren and great-grandchildren have given you the nachas you deserve and will always continue to do so.